<laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you just fine, woman. Oh my goodness. I was so excited to be jumping on with you this morning. So we'll jump right in because I know, I know you got a lot going on. Yeah. How so, are you? I'm fantastic. You know, there's, I was thinking about what the first question that I would ask you and it's, it, you know, and I can't get around it. It's, it's the one that I love to ask because can you believe that we're having this conversation? I'm going to cry. Don't start. <laughs> <laughs> I know I got wa all this here waterproof. We're ready for it. <laughs> Well, so let's start off, like, we'll just dive in because this is such an incredible love story. It really is. Like when I was thinking about this and getting ready and, and what your story means, not only to me as an observer and, and somebody who has had the honor of being in your life, but, you know, it really is a, a story of resilience, of triumph and of a woman having a very clear vision and not giving up on it. So why don't you start off by just sharing a little bit about how you even found yourself on the journey? So I, I differently than a lot of women that are in this journey, and that's one of was one of the hard things at first, is that my story is very, very different in the sense that I got married, I was almost 30, almost 33 years old, and I said, I'm young. I'm going to wait a few, like a couple of years to start trying. I want to enjoy a little bit with my husband. And one of a, one good friend of mine, this I, I, I figured out afterwards, right? But a good friend of mine, I met her in Brazil at one point because I was already living in Italy. And she said, I had a terrible year. I had three abortions like natural losses. Um, I'm starting IVF and, um, and it's been very hard on me this year. And I was shocked. Like I had never heard of such stories and coming from a close friend, I went home and I called my husband who was in Italy. And I'm like, we need to start trying now. That must have been an because, awesome call for him to get, right? Exactly. Like, <laughs> it's not, I love you, you know, let's start a family. It's like, oh my God, this is what's happening to this good friend of mine. Let's start trying as soon as you get here or as soon as I, I go back, I don't remember. Um, so I found myself in this journey out of fear. So this I learned through through you, right? This I had no absolutely no idea in the beginning. And we started trying and we tried for months and months and months. And I finally got pregnant and I took one, I, I well, my period was late. I took one of this pharmacy tests at, at that point. I think it was October 2017. And it was a positive test. And I only took the test because I had a flight to Brazil that same day. And I said, I'm not going to travel without knowing and without letting my husband know. So it was a positive test. I took the plane. I had cramps during the flight. I get to Brazil and my period arrives. I was devastated. Um, and then after that, we tried for other months and nothing happened. So I jumped into IVF. I said, IVF is the solution. I was 36, 35, 36. So I jumped into IVF. I did all the, the exams. Everything was perfect. Uh, had lots of eggs. Not, like nothing showed up. And the doctor told me, you, this I think was May 2018. And the doctor said, by the end of the year, you're gonna be pregnant, no doubt about that. And the end of the year came, I had three IVF cycles, I had transferred, I think, four or five uh, embryos at, the, at that point, and nothing had happened. And this went on for five years. So for me, uh, I started the process in Italy with IVF. And every time 
I had to have eggs or embryos, I had to do a pickup. So I had to go through IVF every time I had to make a transfer because I had lots of eggs, but they did not uh, survive as embryos. So they were kind of transferring fresh embryos at that point. And uh, I, I actually went back and I figured out that I had, I think, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five pickups, five IVF cycles in Italy, transferring, I don't know, many, many embryos. And not, uh, I had one ectopic pregnancy. So after the third IVF, I got pregnant. I'm like, oh, I did the beta. It, it doubled every 48 hours. Like I was like, oh, I'm, I'm pregnant with twins. You know, the, the numbers were high. I was super happy. First ultrasound, they didn't find anything. So I was in the, in the room with like seven doctors. Nobody found anything. It was like devastating. But that was not the worst point. I think the worst point was during COVID, I had an, a, a last transfer here in Italy and I absolutely hit rock bottom. I was like, why is this not happening? You know? And I took a decision at the time and I said, I'm going to do this in, in, in Spain. They're doing something wrong here. There, there must be another way. You can't keep repeating the same thing and expecting a different result, right? So I said, I'm going to try it in Spain. And then the first call with us in Spain with, uh, with one, like a very well-known clinic, they said, you know, let, you should try, um, how do you say, a donor egg. I'm like, I'm sorry, but I'm getting 12, 12 eggs every pickup. Like, why should I go? So it scared the hell out of me. And I said, okay, this is not no way. I'm going to go to Brazil consult a clinic there and see what's happening. And then the borders closed. I was locked in Brazil. And I said, okay, this is a sign. I'm going to do it here. You know, I'm here. I have my friends, my family is here. Maybe I should just try it here. And I started the process there without my husband. Like he would come and go to donate the sperm. And after I think another four or five cycles in Brazil and another four transfers, I got pregnant. But the thing is that I started, like, I still wasn't there, right? I was in Brazil. I had changed a lot of things. And I knew something was missing. I did some transfer. Nothing was working. But I did not, somehow I knew this would happen. I was not going to give up. I was willing to give anything else up in my life, but not that. Like, I remember for the first time I had um, the analysis of the embryos to see if there were elploids or not. And I, and I finally got an elploid and they transferred that and it didn't work. And then I said, I was devastated. I, I took the test the day before I turned 40. So it was like the worst uh, birthday ever. <laughs> and I said, Some, I'm missing something. And then I started downloading books. Like maybe I should go back to trying naturally. I didn't know what, what else to do, but I knew there was another way. And your book showed up. And I was like, okay, this is this is weird. Like, am I the reason I'm not getting pregnant? And I read your book in, I think, one day. And I said, wow, okay, maybe this is it. You know, I need to contact this woman. <laughs> and then I saw your pink hair and I was like, okay, this is weird. <laughs> Should I trust this woman? She seems so eloquent, but at the same time, I was like, yeah, okay. So I listened a bit to your, uh, for your podcast and I contacted you. I started your program and then I had another transfer that did not work out. And the second transfer, I was pregnant. So this is like five years, ups and downs. You can imagine, right? My husband and relationship was 
going down the drain. I lost myself. I was always very secure about things that I was doing and I just lost myself. I had no idea anymore of what decisions I was making, you know, before understanding everything with you. So I was just lost, like making decisions out of fear, making wrong decisions, obviously, because of that. And, uh, and then thank God I found you and it put me on the right path of the one thing I was missing, which was really just taking control back of, of me, you know, and having my mindset set right. Well, you know, your story, I mean, because at this point, how many IVF cycles did you have when you found the book? Was that like, I was trying to follow the count. Was it 10? I had seven IVF cycles. Okay. Um, with 13 embryo transfers transferred at one point I even transferred like three embryos at once and I said okay maybe the doctors don't know what they're doing you know and I had overall I had uh, eight transfers before joining the program because the journey itself I counted I had nine pickups so IVF so nine IVF cycles with hormones and all of that 10 transfers and my pregnancy is embryo number 15, 15. Like I've never heard of a woman who transferred so many embryos, (laughs) never. (laughs) Well, but you know what? I think, and that takes us to an interesting place, Marina, because you, it would have been really easy. I mean, with those numbers, right? Like with, with, at that point, seven IVF cycles and 13 transfers kind of at the time that we met, like it would have been really easy for you to just completely give up, right? Because everybody around you was saying, well, who does this? And that's a lot. And you know, what was it that really made you dig your heels in as we say, and like say, no, I don't care what anybody's saying. I'm I'm moving forward. Roseanne, it's the it's it's hard to put into words. It's something bigger than yourself. It's you know being a mother is going to happen for you. Like I knew inside my heart that I would never leave this earth without having the experience of being pregnant with my own baby, with my own egg, with my husband's sperm. Like for me, I remember clearly you asked the question, you know, why do you want to be a mother? And for me it was to see my husband and myself uh, in another form, right? So donor eggs, it's not a criticism. It's just what was inside me. So donor eggs, a donor sperm, or adopting, none of those options were for me. So I knew inside, somehow, it was just bigger than myself. Like, of course, I had up and down, I cried. At some point, I was like, what am I doing? But it was just much bigger. Like, who who does this for five? Like, at 40, I'm taking, uh, I, I was having 17 eggs, you know? And I know this is not for everybody, but but that's why the story is so weird because I'm fertile, you know, like, how is this not happening? I have so many eggs, you know, like we, we are able to have embryos. So why is this not happening? But there's something there that just kept telling me, it, it, this is for you, you know, Some, somehow this will come. Mm-hmm. Well, so what made you willing to explore the mindset piece? Because a lot of people just focus in on the physical and they figure, oh, you know what? Like, you know, because I did it too when I was on the journey. I'm like, I, you know what? These doctors are going to fix me. Um, but they didn't. 
<laughs> I had to fix me. So, so I'm curious about your perspective on this, having seen so much, like what was it for you that really had you take a look and say, it's, I got something going on here. Well, I changed clinics many times. I changed countries. I changed the environment. I changed my diet. I was taking every single vitamin. I was on the non this, non that. And I wasn't complaining. Like people are like, oh, you can eat, you know, a little sweet here and there. I'm like, no, you know, maybe, but I'm doing the non this, non that, blah, blah, blah. So I changed every single aspect around me and nothing had changed. I was still not pregnant. So when I came across your book, I was like, maybe, maybe I need to work on that. And for me to accept that I needed this type of help was very, very hard. Like to understand, because I've always fought for everything I wanted, you know? Like, yeah, you know this, like even going for an MBA, like you study, you do it and you get what you want. But for the first time I was doing everything and nothing was, was happening. So I changed a lot of the, 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 a lot of things and still nothing was happening. So it was in my, for me, it was just like coming down to this one conclusion, like maybe really I need to change however I'm dealing with the situation or whatever's in my mind. Wow. Wow. I mean, I, I think that it's funny how it hits us so differently, right? Like sometimes it's like the last, well, and it was true in my case and it's kind of true in yours where we just, we're so used to working so hard and there being a more direct correlation between the amount of work we're doing and what we get but we're completely missing that we are the common denominator. We're the common theme in all of this. So what were some of the things that you were surprised maybe that you had to look at when it came to your mindset? How, how much time do we have? <laughs> we got all day, sister. <laughs> No, I think there there are many many things, right? Because you need to really it's a it's a hard work. Hard work, I mean, you need to confront certain things about yourself that maybe you're not ready. But what but when I put my mind to something, it it means I'm ready. So I was ready. It's not easy. But I I looking back, I think there are three main points that I, I found out about myself in this journey and and then obviously not only about the journey right you've right. you you realize that you've been making some repetitive things along your life and you need to change that so for me for sure fear was a huge thing that I had to deal with and just let go like it's something I still work on every day. Like, I don't want to make decisions. I don't want to feel the fear of everything around you. What are you going to do? Or, so fear was clearly the first thing I came across. Second, because I've always been very independent, you know, type A and whatever, however you want to call it. Um, I've always done what I wanted the way I wanted. And when you get into this journey, you start questioning yourself so much and you think the doctors know it all. And they clearly have no idea because I also got pregnant on my own protocol. I'll, I'll let you, <laughs> that story is a whole nother level. But anyways, I found myself, um, not knowing I, I didn't have the joy anymore. Like I was punishing myself kind of. So I was not doing the things that made me happy. Like going to Brazil and being in Brazil and seeing my friends and realizing that I love being in the beach, you know, that I, I just love being around 
good friends of mine enjoying a glass of wine you know i wasn't i wasn't doing anything that was bringing me joy anymore so that was a a, a huge uh part of it and i had to let go and start enjoying life even though what i really wanted wasn't happening right i think this is a recurring theme with with many women right that are on this journey and then obviously doing these things i started taking control back control not control like i'm right. controlling the situation but just being more confident of what i wanted and not letting other people tell me oh now we're going to transfer three embryos or we're going to do this or we're going to do that like wait a minute it's my body you know i decide how i want to do this and i will set the terms maybe I'll, i took like for the first time i said okay i'm taking two months off of this craziness and i just took two months i traveled enjoyed life and when i did for the first time again the ivf with already joining your course was the first time i had many embryos and i manifested my two elploids and then i manifested another two elploids so at 40 i was having more success than i was having at 35 36 when i started the journey wow wow you know i have heard that before this idea that when you start living again the result like changes like dramatically i mean cuz the it was true for me too like it how do you get pregnant like later in life with more ease right than than you did when you were allegedly more fertile exactly wow exactly it's it's um and then and then you start understanding that it all starts here you push everything you know like you you push everything to your body from your your mindset so all all the exercises and i i manifested these things you know i i truly believe it was a manifestation of my uh of my work and what i what i was envisioned for myself because i i was always looking backwards oh that didn't work that didn't work so now it will work but that didn't work so always looking backwards at all the failures which are not failures but looking at everything that didn't work and for the first time with your help i was looking forward of how i envisioned myself how my life was going to be i saw myself with my husband and two kids playing at the beach i've never done that i was not always looking backwards you know so for the first time i was looking forward and looking at where i wanted to be not where i was at not what i where i had been but where i wanted to be mm. and that for me was very hard to do but it just completely changed everything but things even like even if i didn't want to do it i heard you say you know when you go to the clinic i i was in brazil i was driving my my parents car and they have like the the chair for my for my niece that was always empty when i was in the car going to the clinic alone and i started talking to my baby i'm like yeah we're going to go there la 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 so i started talking i started singing with him or her i didn't know at the time but i started doing things as if they were real already it's for me it was like i i'm going crazy at one point <laughs> i said i'm going to buy the crib i'm in brazil i'm not in my house in italy i'm not with my husband i'm going to buy the crib my parents are going to think i went crazy you know i was about to buy a crib and just leave it there but then thank god 
I got pregnant and I bought the crib now, not then, but I was about to do that. You know, when you think about this, I mean, like, imagine it, it, it probably would have been hard for you to believe way back when that taking control, being able to look forward, enjoying your life again, trusting yourself, quit hammering yourself with the quote unquote failures. It probably would have been really hard for the old Marina to believe that that could have any impact. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. At one point I, I was like, maybe I just went completely nuts, you know, but you arrive at a point that you, you've done, you've done everything. Like why taking so many vitamins is okay and not envisioning a life is not, right? Who says that changing your diet will work? It's a trial and error, you know? Who says that changing the, the, the medicine you're taking will help the quality of your embryos? It's all trial and error. Yeah, yeah. And you're willing to do that, right? Because it's your dream. Right. When you, you start a business, you don't give up on the first problem you encounter or face. You are not afraid of cold calling people to make things happen. You're not afraid of just walking into a room and, you know, exposing your mind or your idea. You're confident about this because it's your business, you know. But why in... In the business world, some things is okay. And when you, you're talking about your own dreams, your private life, suddenly you you come up with these things and say, okay, maybe this is, I'm going crazy. Why, you know? Right, right. You know, it, it never ceases to amaze me that People will get, oh, you know, I can't drink coffee and I can't eat gluten. I can't do that. And yet you're carrying your mind everywhere you go and you're not concerned about what's going on in your head, (laughs) right? It's like, it's just, you know, and it's understandable because a lot of us have not been trained to think differently or to think that we have a hand in all of this or that we can influence it, but you're living proof that you can. So, so why don't you share with us what was different in Brazil? Cause that's where the story gets really, really interesting because we know that you had one transfer that didn't work out. Let's talk about the next one. Cause that one, <laughs> I know the story. It's crazy. Well, in Brazil, um, I started, I think, I saw also going back to to where I was brought up and the environment and just being around, you know, like the Brazilians, because it's very, culturally, it's very different. I'm not going to say Brazilians, but even in Sao Paulo, which is a bit harder than than other parts of Brazil, but people are very different than people in Milan. And just being back there and, I don't know, the, the environment, the, the, everything was already different. And it just felt so good, you know, being back and re- reminding myself of who, who I once was, right, that I lost along the way. And I started doing more of the things that I enjoyed. I started uh, hanging out with friends that I had completely shut off because I was not sharing this with many people. So I I actually started sharing my story once I got to Brazil and people are like, wow, why didn't you share this before? But it's very personal, right? You think the next will work, you know, the next transfer will work, the next month the baby will come and so, and and then i i was feeling much better i was doing things i enjoyed and i just did one transfer it didn't work i 
kind of said it was kind of my doctor and me talking, but I, I still allowed him to make some decisions. And then when that didn't work and we, we were going to do the second transfer, I walked into the office and he was again, oh, you know, his, he was kind of cautious about things. And I, I just, I remember like taking his hand and saying, you know what? Every single doctor that I went to thought they could do it differently. And nobody got me pregnant. I still don't have a baby. So this is what we're going to do. <laughs> we are going to do this. We are going to do that. I want to try this. I know it's experimental. I, I don't care. Like, I don't care if you think it doesn't, it's not going to work. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. So I said everything. It was like a, a complete protocol, like with everything out there. And he said, you know what, Marina, we can do it. But that is, um, how did he call it? The... Um, like the panic protocol. We only do this, like we only use everything out there when we don't know what we're doing. And I said, but clearly nobody knows what they're doing. So I'm gonna do it my way and we're not gonna call it the panic protocol. We are gonna call it the success protocol. I don't, there's no panic here. Like I know what I'm doing. And he said, Okay, but your endometrium this time is not eight, it's seven. And I said, I don't care about the endometrium. I had it at nine and it didn't work. So, you know, and we did the protocol and I remember going to the transfer. I, I, I have like, <laughs> I have a sneakers that they're very shiny. And I said, this is my day. I put those sneakers on. I went to the clinic, like shiny sneakers. And I did the transfer. And I had done the, uh, how do you call it? The, uh, 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 the Chinese needle. Oh, acupuncture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Acupuncture. I had done that before the, the day of the transfer. And then the day after the transfer, I went there, I did it. I wasn't completely convinced, but I said, it doesn't affect or oh, I'm gonna do it. And while I was there, I started feeling a bit sick. Like I, I said, I, I think I'm coming down with something. Maybe I'm just tired, you know, or maybe one of the drugs I was taking like hit me some in another way. And I went home and I had fever the entire night. So for six nights, I had fever. I was in bed for six days. And I said, okay, this is like six or seven days. Uh, and I said, this is not going to work. Like the recommendation is move, you know, you get, need to get the blood flowing, like staying in bed doesn't help you. But I, I couldn't help myself. I was feeling really, really sick. And I was doing COVID tests every day, not COVID, just like fever, fever. And at the seventh or eighth day, I said, you know, fuck this. I'm going to take the, the I'm going to pee on the stick because if it, I was like, it didn't work out. I've been lying like with fever for seven days. And this is it. So I can move forward right i can take some drugs get better and start thinking about the next cycle and i take the test and like this faint positive and i'm like okay i peed wrong on the stick like <laughs> how many ways are there to pee on the stick and it's said, okay I, I peed wrong on the stick and then i said i called i was like okay this is weird and I said, I'm going to buy more and I'm going to do it tomorrow morning. And then at lunchtime, I had a bit of uh, blood 
coming out, and that was implantation blood from the embryo. I called the doctor and he said, do not worry. This is not a period, it's too early. It's in probably implantation of the embryo. Tomorrow morning you wake up and you go do the blood exam. And I did, and I was pregnant. And I was like, how? <laughs> what? Like, it, it's very weird after so long getting the positive. And, and immediately, like this was June. This was June. In April, we had a session. And you told me, you know, Marina, sometimes people like us, women like us, that we do a lot, like we're always making things happen. We, we go after things, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes we just need to be. And it, it didn't make sense. I was like, what do you mean? We need just to be and let it be, you know, kind of. <laughs> I remember that conversation. And it's like, what do you mean, let just be? And then that came back to my mind. I'm like, what the hell? Like, I'd never let it be. So the universe threw me this fever, this very, like, I couldn't get out of bed so that I would just be and let things happen, let my body figure itself out for the first time in five years. Isn't and then I was like, what? You know, like, what? Well, think <sighs> about it, Marina, because like from a logical perspective, the fever, like exactly what you were saying, we would freak the fuck out over the fever. Like the fever has stopped me from getting pregnant. There's no way. I have some mystery illness. We, you know, we don't have any clue what's going on. But you were exactly, pregnant. exactly. It was just like probably my body reacting to something new, like letting it, my body figure itself out. That's insane. I mean, and I remember, I remember when all of this went down, and I'm like thinking, if she can make it through this and hold it together. She's going to make it through anything, anything, because you could have backed down. You could have been, oh my gosh, I'm never going to make it through this pregnancy, this fever, eh, you know, all of this stuff, but you didn't. No, you know what? Like I, as you say, you know, when you know, you, th there's nothing you can do. You just stay in the present. You know, and I was just there, like staying in the present and saying, whatever this fe fe fever is, it's just a fever. Like my body's still here. My body's still working. And I probably had the fever because my body was doing a lot of new work. Right. Right. So just staying in the present and taking really <laughs> almost like hour by hour you know like oh i'm feeling a bit better i'm just gonna get up eat something but it i could have panicked but everything that i had been through already had shown me that we have no control well and not only that but you freaking declared it you're like this is not the panic protocol this is the success protocol i'm gonna be a freaking success i don't care that this fever is happening like you kept moving forward. So where yeah. are you today? I'm not going to get up. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had to put a shirt that is very tight. <laughs> I am today. I start. I'm 37 weeks pregnant. Oh my gosh. Thir I'm a you're baby in boy. The home stretch with your baby boy. I mean, Marina. It's crazy, Roseanne. It's crazy. I still cannot believe like he moves so much and I'm like, oh my, oh my God, you know, like this is, I, I, I want to tell him stop moving, but then I'm like, no, you do whatever you want, you know? <laughs> and the, the funniest thing is that now being pregnant, you discover 
also a huge, uh, like a, a new world, you know, so many things to, to, to figure out. And my baby, I'm 37 weeks and he's sitting like he has not turned. And obviously there are statistics and they say that only 3% of the babies do this. And, you know, I was like, of course, it's going to be sitting. He, it took him five years, fevers. And, you know, it took him so long to, to get in here. Of course, he doesn't want to go out now. You know, he's just sitting there as a Buddha. He's like... I don't care what's happening in the outside world, you know, I'm just going to sit here with my mama. <laughs> That's right. Well, I mean, think about it. Multiple countries, probably exactly. thousands of miles flown. I mean, it's such an incredible story, Marina, because when you think about how long you were on the journey, but also how quickly things changed for you, when you changed, it's actually quite remarkable. Yes. It's yes. Stunning. And and I have to tell you, uh, sometimes we don't realize the changes that we are making on ourselves. Thank obviously thanks to you and your program that is so effective also. But with the friends that I've shared, not the, the IVF process on itself, but I have like two, three good friends that I shared. I found this coach and she's amazing and this is what I'm doing. And they said, I, I really noticed the change. Like they say, I one of them says, I'm confident that you're pregnant because you worked with her, with Roseanne, with you. Because we we are not aware of how quickly, when we want to, we can change our mindset. We can change the way we see things. We, we see even the, the worst things that are happening. You know, it's the way we really see and the way we react to everything. It's very easy to sit back and say, oh, of course it didn't work out again. That's easy. But when, if you're not doing the work, you don't realize that this is what you're doing and you're victimizing kind of yourself, you know, saying, Oh, of course this would happen to me again and blah, blah, blah. And then when the embryo transfer didn't work, I said, who cares? Like, it's just another embryo, you know, I'm going to, I, maybe I need to stay here in Brazil a bit longer and I'll enjoy that, you know? So you start seeing, the things that are happening in a completely different way. And sometimes you don't realize because it's, your program is so effective that the changes can come very quickly if you're open to it, very quickly. If you're open to seeing things that are happening in your life and changing your, your mode, really, your mode. You right. switch to a different frequency and you can actually people around you start seeing and yeah. they changed around you too. Oh, you know, 100%. my husband changed around me because I changed, <laughs> you know, it's like grabbing a baby. Nobody can be like, you know, a happy baby. Nobody can be in a bad mood with a happy baby smiling at you. You know, it's the same thing when you are happy, like you're happy, you're smiling. People are like, Oh, okay. Ah, la, la. And you're like, oh, it's okay. You know, let's do this instead. And you're in a different frequency and people just go to that, you know? Right. 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 I mean, it, and what you're saying is absolute gold because when we change, the people around us necessarily have to change. They may not like this version of you, but that's their business but they are unquestionably drawn to it because you're enjoying your life again. And you're, you're allowing yourself to have both be on the journey and enjoy your life because it doesn't have to be miserable. Nobody believes me when I say that, but yeah. misery is a choice and you're living proof. Oh, I was miserable. I was so miserable and I had no idea. 
That's interesting. Isn't it funny that you had no idea? I had, I had no idea because you don't see it, it. It's when you are deep in a situation, it's what they say. When you have a problem, don't respond immediately, you know, at work, whatever, take some time, sleep on it, you know, and when you're so deep, five years of non-stop IVF cycles, non-stop, like I was taking the pill, I was doing this, I was doing that. I became an expert in IVF because I went to the books because I was not trusting doctors. And my, it, I was like, my husband's like, you know, so much more than so many doctors. I'm like, yeah, but you, you go so deep into that, that you forget who you are. You forget, like, you don't see, you don't see it. You don't see the bad change. And right. sometimes you don't see the good change because they can happen fast. Right. Right. And it did happen fast. I mean, it happened really fast by comparison. Like you take this, there was like this much of your journey before. And it's kind of like this, <laughs> which you did. I had but... five years. And then in, let's say when I finished the program, I think it was not even, I think four months, four yeah. months I was pregnant. Like the, yeah. the, the eight week program. Yeah. We still did other things, but, and how do you explain that? How do you explain that? You know, so it's now it's easy. Like now that, that I see it, that I, and during your program, there are so many women that would come up. Oh, I'm pregnant. And I was like, fuck, how is she pregnant? <laughs> I knew, no, I was like, of course she's going to be pregnant because I had this also, you know, I always thought that anybody else could do it except me. And it was, was one of our coaching calls. And I said, I, I know that everyone in this call will be pregnant, but I, I think I will not be pregnant because I could not see it at the time. And then through the work, when you start seeing yourself pregnant and it happens, right? You make it happen. Yeah. It's an, it's incredible. I mean, what you did and who you became and who you are today. I mean, because think about what you're going to be able to teach your son. I'm so glad that I went through the journey because yeah. I'm, I'm already like, I'm in Italy now I'm going to have the baby here and they offer like this course in the hospital with the other moms. Roseanne, it's, it's, it's going to sound stuck up, but it's not. I'm just in a whole different ballgame than the other mothers. Right. Like, I, there, there's so much fear of so many things with, within this group of, like, I don't know, 16, 20 mothers. And I'm not there. Like, I have, I can take whatever, whatever comes. Like, this is the good part. No fear there. I don't care. Like if I, if I don't have milk, this, this is not a fear, you know, like I don't have to worry about these things. Like this will, this is not a problem at all. So right. I'm just in a whole different mindset to obviously being pregnant. I had the most wonderful pregnancy, no problems, nothing, zero, nothing happened. And it's because of my mind. I'm in a place where I was, I had never been. And I'm sure I'm going to be a much better mother to my son now that I went through all of this and, and understood where I was at. I, couldn't, I could have never been pregnant with the fear and the lack of joy. I would have been a terrible mother, a terrible mother. Like all the frustration, all that nervousness, I would probably would have had a very bad pregnancy also. Yeah. I'm just, I know I'm in a, I'm much better mindset to, to, to be with my son. Yeah. And that's why he found me. Oh, whoo. yeah. I mean, when I think about the, the babies that we meet it was like, of course we were being prepared because they're so incredibly special. Like I just, uh, 
it just brings me so much joy to like see such an incredible transformation in, in you and this becoming because it's not like you suck before <laughs> you were amazing before a little bit yeah but it just like it got better you got better and now marina like you're going to you're in a place where you know you can really appreciate this miracle and be everything that you you say that you want to be not only for yourself but for him and your family so what would you say what would you want to say maybe some nuggets of wisdom you've been dropping bombs this whole time but what would you say to the women listening that maybe are years deep and they don't think they can happen it can happen for them like what would you want them to know I don't want to do bumper sticker, you know, like, oh, you can do it. <laughs> but it's not easy. It's not easy. Where you are right now, it's not easy. You you want to give up. You want to, you know, throw the towel, but you don't at the same time. And it's hard to... every. Every woman's journey is very different. But if you know this is for you, you will find the way. Like you will find the way. But you need to do the work. As in everything in life, when you want something, you need to do the work. And it's okay, you know, for me it was step by step. It took me 5 years to understand that my mindset was the last, you know, the last thing that I had to work on, unfortunately. My biggest regret, regret or question is why did I not find Roseanne sooner? <laughs> but because I was not ready, right? Right, right. I right. had to change the clinic. I had to change the country. I had to go back to my origins i had to go back to my friends my culture i had to do a bit of uh therapy that's when i i understood that maybe i needed some help so it was a uh, for me step by step but once you start changing one thing you change another and things don't change you know look at what really is missing there there there's so many possibilities of change and you need to try it it's trial and error like life right right i mean that's that's it's so wise marina and it's you know i think that one of the biggest things to take from this is just look you know this you know you want this so you have to be willing to be the person that gets it and and that may take you in some unknown places but enjoy the ride because there are no guarantees in life except that at the end of the day you have the chance to know that you did everything that you could and there's peace in that yeah but it, but i truly believe that if you really really do do the work and you know if you really see you close your eyes and you see the image of your life with a baby in your hands it's for you yes that image is not there because someone implanted that in your head <laughs> it's because it's it's part of you yeah 100%. so you need to trust you more than anyone else your husband your parents your best friend whoever it's you you trusting you and your vision for your life 100% and never giving up like i i'm i'm the <laughs> i could have given up so many many times yeah. i never questioned money you know money comes up a lot with a lot of women for me i was like it was not even a discussion like money i'll find a way and it's uh, where am i going to spend the money if not on this the biggest right. dream of my life right 
Right, exactly. And, and, but that was also part of the becoming was getting out of the lack and scarcity about time, money, resources, opportunities, because you changed your frequency. You changed the way that you think you saw opportunities instead of living in fear. You walked into a clinic and told them, this is the protocol. <laughs> you the name the protocol. <laughs> you name the protocol. I bet the doctor was wondering what happened to Marina. Like you know, she walked in here like she with her shiny sneakers, knowing exactly what she wanted. I'm gonna go back and just put it Marina's pro- protocol. I think I I <laughs> I, I, I earned that one. <laughs> you totally did. You totally did. Well, thank you so much woman. Thank you for sharing your story here. This is a day that you and I imagined for so long and, and knew at some point we would get here. And it's just incredible. I mean, when I look at your story and I look at you and the transformation and and everything that we've enjoyed together, it just, it not only warms my heart, it makes me so glad that, that, you know, I left the work that I I was doing so I could live this and share this because this is the whole point. This is why I do what I do. It's for women like you and the honor that it is to be by your side and to know you. So thank you for your generosity here, Marina. I'm unquestionably, you're going to be changing lives by sharing this story and giving some inspiration. Roseanne, uh, you know how much of a fan I am of your work, really. I know how much how much you put into this and I have no words to describe how I'm going to come 37 weeks pregnant. I'm (laughs) I'm going to cry. I have no words really to, to thank you for helping me be who I, the best I can be and obviously achieving my dream. But it's your work and it's the effectiveness of your work. And I will not like I I've recommended you to so <laughs> many different people, even if it's not fertility. I'm like, just listen to what she has to say, you know, like it's I, I really have no words. You're, you're, I, 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 I have to thank you every day and I do have you in my thoughts every day because oh. it's really, it's a life-changing thing for me. Absolutely. Like I, there will never be a day that I probably will look at my son and not think of the, <laughs> the pink hair from <laughs> Roseanne. And my dream really is when the baby's here, I want you to meet him because this is, your work. Oh man. Well, you know, I, I appreciate that. It's I'm part of it, but you had to be the woman that implemented it. And that's the thing. That's where the magic happens is being willing to implement, being willing to believe in you and your dream enough to move forward and take that kind of action because yeah, you can learn something all day, but if you don't take action, it doesn't mean anything. So this is a wonderful dance that we do together. So it's uh, it's such a joy, Marina. It's such an incredible thing to see you in this place. I know so many women are going to be so happy to see you here. And thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you, Roseanne. It was a pleasure. Love this episode of the Fearlessly Fertile podcast? Subscribe now and leave an awesome review. Remember, the desire in your heart to be a mom is there because it was meant for you. When it comes to your dreams, Keep saying hell yes.